Uh, welcome to my shop. I'll show you around. Uh, this is uh, my clay storage bin. Uh, make all the clay here on site from a variety of local materials. This is my pottery wheel. It's a treadle wheel and I don't know all the history of it but it was popularized by an English potter Bernard Leach in the mid 20th century and it doesn't exert a lot of torque on the clay as you're making as it's spinning. Uh, it is unique in that it has to be continuously kicked unlike other types of kick wheels but it's very easy to slow down or stop and uh, it just it has a character it adds a characteristic to the clay um, that I like rather than other types of kick wheels. So this is the wood kiln. It's a two-chamber catenary arch, Noborigama style kiln. It was designed by Will Ruggles, a potter who used to live around here. So the wood is all sourced in Bakersville. They're edgings from a, a sawmill. The wood fire potters had the great fortune of having this mill so close by for over 20 years. This is mostly oak. Currently, I prefer poplar and maple if I can get it. But uh, all of these woods have different characteristics when they, the ash from these woods land on the pots and melt. The wood is typically just burned or landfilled, so we're happy to put it to a more creative use. A good amount of the firing I spend sitting right here in my trusty beach chair. Usually uh, two or three people are here helping and we do it in shifts. But I stoke every five to six minutes you're stoking for the period of 21 or 23 hours. So you need a crew around to, to make that doable. So I make a lot of different things. I've never really made a line of any particular thing. Not necessarily a production potter in that sense, but I love to make just real simple pots, bowls, pitchers, cups. When I first came to Penland in 1990, my first teachers around that time were uh, Will Ruggles and Douglas Rankin, and they were wood firers from the area. And I really fell in love with making uh, simple pots. And uh, that's changed over time. Uh, not my love, but my pots. I've had a lot of other experiences in the meantime. Um, I've traveled and lived in Italy for a while and got really, really excited about Etruscan art there. At some point in the early 90s, I began putting animal imagery on the pots, and they're getting a bit more sculptural these days, but still functional. Um, something like this, um, I wouldn't have even considered putting a horse head on a bowl in 1991. <laughs> but now it's hard to imagine not doing that, but I still enjoy making pots to use. And these are useful as well, just a little bit more ceremonial, perhaps, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I have had great time um, living in Italy for quite a while, working for the University of Georgia there uh, around 2012 and 13, and just love the Etruscan art. And those pots usually incorporate some kind of animal imagery or heads on them. That based with my already in, my interest in folk pots from around the world uh, has all kind of come together and just keeps changing. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do all the time in the studio and I, I like that sort of uh, unpredictability and spontaneity in the in the pots. You know each kiln load kind of teaches me about what I'm going to do next. <laughs> 